Welcome back to the COS Business Podcast, the number one show in Colorado Springs. Today, we're sitting here with Kristen Goodwin, owner of The Delta V. And who's our highlighted sponsor for today? We have Pinnacle Advanced Primary Care is our highlighted sponsor for today. And thank you, Travis, for introducing us to Kristen. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your business or a lot about it, however much you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, as my military life was uh, coming close to retirement, um, I found myself really excited about the new possibilities and opportunities that were out there. And I knew that I wanted to do something that would serve others and also make a difference. And that's how I got into executive and leadership coaching. And so um, with my business partner, we started the Delta V, which is change in your velocity. And really what that is, is um, helping, helping individuals or executives or those uh, organizational teams um, accelerate or facilitate uh, their transformative growth. Um, and bottom line, like our mission is about helping those organizations and individuals really reach their full potential, either personally or professionally. That's awesome. And I can just tell from your mannerisms, you have a military background, correct? And we did a little bit of research on you, so we know a little bit about you. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Let's dive into a little bit about that. Cause that's really fascinating, especially with some of the things we read on, um, air force grad, air force academy grad. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. What got you into the military first and foremost? Do you come from a family of military or? I, I do. And uh, that, that's a great question. Uh, my dad uh, served um, over 30 years in the Coast Guard uh, and wanted me to go, you know, get into the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard Academy, follow his footsteps. My mom served as an Air Force reservist as a, as a nurse, as a flight nurse. So I, I had yes, sir, and yes, ma'am on both sides <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, growing up. Yeah, oh, I've heard that uh, the mil the 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 Air Force base is pretty hard to get in. Like the acceptance rates is is not it's not easy, is it? Oh, it, it <laughs> was uh, it, it was it had been a dream of mine for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, it is is pretty tough because they're not just looking at you academically; they're looking mm -hmm. at you physically, um, also how, your involvement in the community. So they're looking for somebody that's uh, really well rounded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you, um, so you became a pilot, correct? I did. Oh, yes. that's really cool. Talk a little bit about like your experience with that. And of course we'll probably tie it into Delta V cause I'm sure all that experience, 32 sure. years experience, um, played a role in what you're doing now, but like you have a lot of great experiences in the military and things that you've flown. And I was just reading up about you and it's just, it's awesome to have someone like you in the community. So let's talk a little bit about that. About a pilot. Yeah. Well, I, I'll say that, um, Kind of go, it goes all the way back to when I was in fourth grade and uh, I was watching, uh, I, I remember very uh, vividly, it was uh, April 12th, 1981. I just dated myself, right? And it was then that I watched the shuttle launch and it was the Col uh, Columbia. Okay. The Challenger was my favorite shuttle, but yeah. in this yeah. instant, this story was a Columbia, Young and Grippen were the uh, pilots of that. And I just remember watching that with my classmates and it was just so distinctive to see that shuttle launch, you know, um, and just, I, it was just absolutely incredible and inspiring. It was then that I wanted to go to the academy mm -hmm. uh, to follow that camaraderie, that, that uh, esprit de corps that both my mom and my, my father had serving in the military with their colleagues. Um, I wanted to be a pilot because I wanted to be an astronaut as well. And that mm -hmm. is kind of where it all started. And so the first step for me was going to that academy uh, and, um, you know, getting that engineering degree. And then I was exceptionally fortunate to uh, be selected at a time when they weren't taking a lot of pilots mm -hmm. um, to go to pilot training. So I, I was really, really excited about that. Mm -hmm. At a time when uh, they weren't accepting not a lot of pilots, but also not a lot of women pilots, right? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. So they're, they're um, in our class, graduating class, there's about 8% women at the academy. So mm. yeah, you, you kind of mentioned that. And so there weren't a lot of women going to pilot training at that time. Mm -hmm. That must have been, a, I mean, you must have a chip on your shoulder to be someone who with enough grit to get through that and know those statistics, right? Did they tell you those statistics up front or did, were you just part of statistics because you were kind of like, when among those first women to do so, right? I, I was just a young kid with a dream. Yeah. And I didn't pay attention to the statistics. I yeah. just tried to do the best job that I could and everything that was in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I was just really driven and, and determined uh, to do the best I could and, mm -hmm. you know, reach that dream. I'd like to take a quick moment and thank our sponsors. Redefine, Redefine mortgages. mortgages. Redefine the home buying experience with Redefine Mortgages. Custom solutions, transparent advice, and even seamless process. Mm. Start the journey to home ownership at redefinemortgages.com. That's redefinemortgages.com. Neon, Neon Pig, Pig Creative. Creative. Bring brands to life with Neon Pig Creative. Dazzling designs and strategic marketing make businesses stand out. Spark creativity at neonpigcreative.com. That's neonpigcreative.com. Exponential, Exponential Impact. Impact. Fuel startup success with Exponential Impact. Mentorship, resources, and support available to amplify impact. Mm -hmm. Join a community of change makers at exponentialimpact.com. That's, That's exponentialimpact.com. <laughs> Fast Signs. Fast Signs can help you with all your signage and visual marketing needs. Whether you're starting a new business or just need a signage refresh, let Fast Signs help you. Make your statement. That's fastsigns.com. Cars, Cars Helping, Helping Charities. Charities. Cars Helping Charities is a turnkey fundraising solution for nonprofits. Cars Helping Charities allows your nonprofit to accept vehicle donations, which are sold, and then the funds go to the organization. Mm. CHC is partnering with my nonprofit of choice, Mattersville, mm -hmm. to help them raise funds through vehicle donations. Please consider donating your car to support Mattersville. CHC will pick up any car, an old clunker you have sitting in your driveway, or a car you just don't feel like selling anymore. Make sure to visit Cars Helping charities.org that's cars helping charities.org now let's get back to the show i think every young kid especially like young men like i would say like aspire to be a pilot at some point in their life it's just like the like they watch top gun like there's <laughs> there's so many cool things about being a pilot right you're right. cool you have great vision i knew of like right out of the gate you can't get in because the vision right i'm like blind so i knew right away i was like no i can't I can't get in, but there's a lot of stipulations too right to to getting in in the first place not only like mental attitude but or aptitude, uh, but physical, right? For like good vision and, and stuff like that. Talk a little bit more about that. Just the, the attributes. Yeah, is in. there physical requirements too, like yeah. running and all that too? Yeah, but it, you, you run, um, it, you have to do push-ups, uh, sit-ups, and, and you know, for us, uh, <laughs> maybe not as, as for, for either one of you, but just pull-ups, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're just built a little differently, but you had to do that. And I think that for for a lot of the women was one of the biggest uh, uh, challenges was mm -hmm. just meet that requirement. But they had a standard and and you had to meet it. And um, that was expectation. And and I like that. Right. You, you want to be you want to move forward and be selected based on um, your aptitude and your ability to do a job, not because of anything mm -hmm. else. So have you seen uh, there's a, a new movie out on Amazon um, with Michael Pena. And it's about being an astronaut. Like, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? I, I've heard of it and I have not watched it yet. It is yet. so good. Like I have, I've, I've had a very similar dream as you. Like I, I actually still want to go to Mars actually. So I, I'm going to make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And what's cool is with the, the way technology is going, I don't have to be join the, the air, the air force Academy to, to do it, right. you know, <laughs> cause I don't know if I could make that cut, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, but in that movie, like, it starts out him as a kid and like he has this dream that he's always wanted to do this uh but he doesn't realize it until like he's older though and like he's doing the running like people like it, it takes place in the 80s i think too or, or something like that maybe the 90s um and like everyone's like why is he running like <laughs> and it's just <laughs> I, I was when i was reading some of the some of your story i was like wow that's that's a, it's 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 a very inspiring story too but like it's just really cool to see those connections it was one of those movies that actually made me emotional when he actually like got into space like because that was just that was like the the climax of the movie so it's like well <laughs> you're inspiring me to one see the movie yeah. and not give up and yeah you know, i'd say it doesn't matter how young we are mm -hmm. right you know keep keep shooting for for mars i think there's uh, a lot of avenues to do yeah. that yeah forward. screw the moon we're going for mars that's <laughs> right i mean <laughs> bypass that right yeah. <laughs> well the moon first actually and okay then there you go there you go yeah, I'm excited for the lunar mission. I'm excited for all, all this stuff. Like last month, they uh, liter literally, like almost a month ago, I think, uh, to this day that they, like a private company, like put put equipment on on the moon. And like, that's yeah. just the first time in like, what, 50 years that we've even like tried to do that. And it was through yeah. a private company. So yeah. Absolutely amazing. I <laughs> love yeah. it. I love I love the stuff. innovation. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one thing that's so exciting about the space industry um, is it's growing and it's not just about the government or NASA, it's mm -hmm. about um, corporate America 
and industry getting there and everybody mm -hmm. coming together uh, to really accelerate that technology and that innovative thought mm -hmm. and having that agility um, as we progress to be able to do things that we dreamed of and mm -hmm. make it reality. That's what's exciting. Yeah. So, so what do you think about it was that made you want to be an astronaut? Was it, was it the, just this big goal or what was it? I think what it was is, is just that moment in mm -hmm. class. You know, you, we all have defining moments. Mm -hmm. it, it could be an individual that inspires us. It could be an act. It could be something. And, and just seeing, um, you know, that shuttle launch and, you know, I can, you can, I can still vividly see it. Right. And, you know, two minutes after launch, the SRBs or the solid rocket boosters, you know, come off of the shuttle and it just, it, it starts to, uh, you know, change its tra trajectory yeah. and go into space. And it's just all of that. I mean, it just, uh, seeing that power and, you know, just transitioning into another element of from earth to space, mm -hmm. you know, something that not everybody gets to do. And it was then that I just got excited about, you know, going into space yet. I knew that there was a path to get there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my father went to the coast guard Academy and, um, uh, he goes, you can fly, you could fly in the coast guard. I was like, dad, but you have to be on boats, you know, to get to the planes. And I was just was really passionate about the air and, and soaring in the skies and, and so um, I really looked, you know, to the academy mm -hmm. um, and that camaraderie that my dad had with all his classmates. And I mm -hmm. thought, you know, I don't want to be part of mm -hmm. part of that as well. What was that moment like when you flew your first plane? I'm assuming yeah. I don't know if that was the moment for you where you're like, holy cow, like this dream is coming into. I don't know if that was the moment or if it was maybe a couple times after that where you actually could like maybe focus and be like and seize the moment. Maybe you're just so focused on passing the test or whatever <laughs> might have been. But yeah, tell us a little bit about that moment for sure. Yeah, sure. You know, I think what you're what you're asking is about those moments where you're like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, how, how, how did I get here? And I'm living this dream that I've had for so long. Uh, I'd say right here in Colorado Springs uh, as a cadet, it was 1991. Um, I had two weeks of flying course and I was flying what they call the T-41. It's a Cessna 172. And after a week, only a week, um, they said, hey, it's time to solo. I go, what, what? solo? <laughs> like by myself? And so we flew out to this uh, landing strip right here in Colorado Springs. It's called Bullseye. And we flew out together and then he got out and it was uh, another um, student in another plane of myself and we flew by ourselves in the pattern and that moment was exhilarating and scary at the same time because as i he got out and i was taxiing about to take off i heard every noise in the plane i thought the wheel was going to fall off mm -hmm. or the wing you know you just have all those fears but that that was a that was a moment that wow i'm doing this and i'm doing it by myself and you know how how did this moment come to be it was really exciting yeah. But so. What did you get to fly in your career? Because I read up some cool things. And I thought it'd be fun to share some some of the things you get to fly. It's it's really inspiring for sure. I I fly a mean paper airplane. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I can, I can. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I I uh, you know talking about those those moments where you're just like, holy cow, how did I get here? I, you know, I I went on um, when people said that hey, a woman can't fly, a woman can't go to combat. Um, you know, what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got to go on and fly nine different aircraft. And um, one of them being uh, the B-2 stealth bomber, uh, the B-52 bomber, the EC-130, um, and a whole bunch of trainers. And each one of them are exceptional and exciting in their own way. Um, but it's, you know, th those are the moments when each one of those flights and getting checked in all those planes where I sat back and said, holy cow, I'm so fortunate to be living my dream and have the opportunity to do this. From Cessna to B2, is it B2 the biggest one that you flew or was it that you said the EC-130? What did you I, say? What I, was the biggest one? Because that's a big difference well, right there, right? If you want to talk size, <laughs> I would say the B-52. Yeah, is, it's is the huge. They, yeah. Fit, yeah. they fit inside this room? Oh, oh no. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the B-52... Um, it, the the wingspan I believe is 179 uh, 179 feet I think the the B2 is 172 <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's just a little, little what's small. a good reference thing that we could like put there that is a great yeah. like a bus right or like each wing is like a bus essentially uh, or what I, it, yeah that that maybe I think a bus is like 30 something 
Well, yeah, that, that, that's yeah. good. I should have that uh, <laughs> reference, and I don't. I, I don't know what that is, but it's yeah. it's, it's pretty darn big for sure. Yeah. And uh, the B two from front to back. If you have a fighter, everybody kind of has an idea of what a fighter is. Top Gun. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it's sixty nine feet uh, toes to tail. Although mm-hmm. the B two does not have a tail, which I think is just still an aerodynamic wonder. Wow. You know, mm-hmm. it's the only plane w- without a tail. So it, it's a uh, sixty nine feet. You know, from front to back, and then one hundred seventy two. You know, wingtip to wingtip. Uh, but the the B fifty twos longer. And, and wider. Mm-hmm. And that plane, it was built in the 1950s. I mean, oh. and we're still flying it. I mean, that's a testament to the technology yeah. and those engineers that wow. were so innovative back then. It's similar to these microphones. Michael Jackson used these microphones like in the 80s. Oh, wow. Yeah. Been around for a long well, how time. How about that? Yeah. Good technology. <laughs> <Not> these exact <laughs> ones. I was going to say these exact ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fantastic technology. Yeah. yeah that's really that's amazing, though. 1950s. Like, yeah. It's, Right. And so when I got in it, you know, I, I saw cobwebs that were from the 1950s. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> was that the Skunk Works whole program? Is that what I'm, I'm hearing? Or is that the SR-70? That's a SR-71. Okay. Yeah. And again, something that was like, like, I think that was like 60s or 70s, I think. And just yep. unbelievable Absolutely. marvel of an airplane even today. Yes. Unbelievable yeah. what these planes could do. And so like you flying those, I'm assuming there's probably another one of those moments of like, holy cow, look what I'm yeah. doing now. And just like the level of training and trust that goes into someone like you to, for them to give you something like that worth, I don't know how much money that's worth, but probably something insane. And it's just, that's- A few million maybe? Yeah, maybe <laughs> like a hundred million, maybe something like that, probably something <laughs> crazy, right? So that's- well, just, They only made 21 B2s. Oh, okay. Uh, and when you make 21 of anything, it's they kind of get expensive, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Uh, if you make more of them, you know, the price goes down. So it's a $2.2 billion aircraft. And so, you know, that weighs heavily on there's only two pilots mm-hmm. and uh so that that weighs heavy heavy on us the responsibility mm-hmm. not only that you're flying one of 21 uh now there's 20 that's a whole nother story uh yeah that yeah there, that that's a lot uh to ensure that you're doing the mission right uh mm-hmm. but you're also bringing that home safely did, did that did that um missing one hap like happen through like a, a- a crash? I think I might have heard about that. It did. Okay. There was a crash. Um, it was, uh, they were deployed to Guam, which mm-hmm. uh, we did a lot of deployments uh, there. And it was actually that their tour was complete. Mm. And so um, it, it was a two ship uh, of B-2s. It was a second one. Uh, and it had rained a lot that night. And in, in Guam, it was a rainy season. And um, one thing you know, you, you learn uh, water had gotten into the system and it's an electronic jet mm. and the engineers and maintenance came up and, you know, did what they thought they needed to do. Uh, yet the computer um, didn't take all the inputs correctly. So when it got on the runway and started going down the runway, it thought it was going 20 knots faster or miles an hour, if you want to say like in a car, mm-hmm. faster than it was. And so when it rotated, um, it instantly went into a stall because it was going slower than it actually was. And so the pilots were trying to fly it and it got to a point where the computers took over and it was a matter of Ooh. seconds and uh, they ejected. Everybody was fine, Okay, good. Uh, yet the, the plane wasn't. Mm-hmm. And so that's okay because you yeah, know, the yeah. pilots were fine. And you so. can make another another one maybe, yeah. maybe. i don't know that, <laughs> if they could then maybe why haven't they you know <laughs> yeah so yeah. so yeah that that's what happened yeah. and i happened to be in hawaii working for the pacific commander and uh we i heard about it right away and went in and i had to brief him mm. uh, that it's, it's funny it was serendipitous i just mm-hmm. happened to be the one to have to brief him on what was going on because i knew the plane and happened to be right there so did you hear about what happened today at uh with the 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 freight ship Yes, it, it's horrible. It's Baltimore, yeah. The, the elect- yeah, the, in Baltimore, the electricity uh, shut out on that that boat, right? Like yeah. a couple times, and like it they just did. that thing is so massive, like that's crazy. There, pe- I've always had fear going on bridges, like <laughs> like <laughs> it, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> right, kudos to the crew mm-hmm. though that realized something was wrong, alerted people, and they were able to 
you know, prevent more people mm. from being on the bridge. We're going to take a quick break and thank our sponsors. Pinnacle, Pinnacle Advanced, Advanced Primary, primary care. care. Skip the healthcare hassle with Pinnacle Advanced Primary Care. Direct primary care for a simple monthly fee, putting health first. No insurance needed. Experience personalized care that's as unique as every individual. Visit PinnacleAPC.com to learn more. That's PinnacleAPC.com. Franchise, franchise succeed. succeed. Grow any business with Franchise Succeed. From development to expansion, turning small businesses into national brands through franchise. Franchising. Start scaling up with a free consultation at FranchiseSucceed.com today. That's FranchiseSucceed.com. Planet, Planet Duct. Duct. Breathe easier with Planet Duct, Colorado Springs' premier air duct cleaning service. Powerful vacuum trucks rid homes of allergens and dust. Clear the air by visiting PlanetDuct.com. Mm -hmm. That's PlanetDuct.com. Dot com. Com. Epic, Epic Eyewear. Eyewear. Elevate style with Epic Eyewear. Innovative designs meet unmatched quality, ensuring a great look and better vision. Discover your next pair of shades at epiceyewear.com. That's epiceyewear.com, spelled E P O C H, eyewear.com. And we're running a special discount right now, Andrew. It's COSBP15 for 15% off your 15 order. 15% off your freaking order at epiceyewear.com. We're in the sunglasses right now. If you're watching, listening on the audio, de definitely check out the video. So you can see and check out how epic they are. E P O C H. Eyewear.com. Eyewear.com. Mm -hmm. Now we will get back to this episode. Let's talk about um, some moments while you were in the military during your career. There was a sure. lot of moments just in history, right? You had September 11th that happened while you're um, in the military and so many other ones after that, of course. Um, tell us a little bit about those experiences, as much as you want, of course, but like I'm sure those shaped you and where you were when they happened. Cause even us as civilians, we remember where we were right. when those moments happened. So maybe give our, our viewers a little bit more of a lens of like your side of the table and like what that experience was like as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this might, you know, try to keep this as, as, as truncated as possible yet. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, one of those moments, I think anybody, you know, that was alive at that time knew, you knew exactly where you were and what you were mm -hmm. doing. Um, I do. And, <laughs> yeah, and there's a whole generation that doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and I didn't so think about that. I'll paint I'll paint the picture of, to answer your question. Mm -hmm. um, I just left the Pentagon um, and uh, was selected, you know, into the B two program. So went to Whiteman Air Force Base, which is the only base that the B twos uh, are housed or live, right? So all of them are there. So there I am, and my I'm starting B two training October one. So I'm real excited, and until then I get to fly these really cool little jets called a T thirty eight. They're um, they used to be the Thunderbirds. You guys are familiar with the Thunderbirds? Oh yeah. They used to be the jets that they flew, right? So fast, it's fun. So I'm flying that around, and I was the first woman on the base uh, to fly. So a lot of the um, uh, the security guys knew me coming in and out of the base, right? And uh, and I'll say, I'll come back to that in a second. So it's uh, September 11th, and my colleague um, said, hey, come with me. We're going to go to the tower early in the morning around 8 o'clock because um, I want you to watch the re the response to a nuclear gener generated um, exercise. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, that'd be great. So we're at the tower around eight o'clock and he says, so you have all the air crew in this um, alert shack and you could see the shack. And he said, here are all of the hangars with the B2s in them. And I said, okay. And he goes, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be this giant voice really loud on the base. And it's gonna give this code word and it's gonna say it really loud and that's gonna alert you know, the air crews to report to aircraft as soon as possible and await you know, further instructions. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, that's really cool, right? So I'm just all excited for this to happen. As soon as he explains it, sure enough, the giant voice gets on there and they go, mm -hmm. and the code word, unclassified by the way, is klaxon, klaxon, klaxon. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my gosh. And you see it, all the air crew run out of the shack, get in the cars, and they're going to the respective hangars. And at the same time, the hangar doors, if you can just visualize this, just open up. And you see, if you've ever seen a B-2, it is just this incredible oh, yeah. sight of air power. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, I like have goosebumps. I'm like, I get to fly that, I hope, soon. And, and so they all run in there. And I said, now what happens? They go, well, they get, they're, they're gonna read in you know, different codes and they're gonna decide what they have to do next, either taxi or shut down, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, that's great. So right after that, it's, uh, it's about 825. 
9-11. And, <laughs> and, and I go to the gym because they're doing exercise. You can't really fly. And, and so I'm going to the gym. And as soon as I walk in the gym, all those security guys that have, I've gotten to know over the last couple months, I said, hey, hey, ma'am, you're a pilot, right? And I said, yeah, yeah. I go, what? They go, come with me. And they took me to the TV. And um, one of the Twin Towers was on fire. And he goes, they go, they said it was a plane. And I go, well, that's odd. It's really, you know, it's a nice out, you know, no weather. Clear day. Clear day. It's not, you know, in the in the in the pattern like that, mm -hmm. they, that that's not where they would normally fly and as we were talking the the second plane hit the other tower mm. and we all sat there in just disbelief and within a minute i can't believe i'm saying this it was they had beepers right i mean a lot of people don't know what beepers are but they had beepers and it went off and i was just like oh my gosh this is for real and the moment that a lot of people don't know is our whole military, the triad of the military at that moment, that means the Navy submarines, mm -hmm. the missiles, you know, underground and the, the bombers were all um, poised with nuclear weapons because of this exercise. This, the, the, that the timing was mm -hmm. just, you, you, we couldn't redo that. Mm -hmm. So we were all poised for a nuclear war uh, exercise, of course, mm -hmm. at that moment, and everybody was on pause because now what do you do? What what was the next potential, you know, um, terrorist attack if there was going to be one? Mm -hmm. And the Joint Chiefs had to make the decision: Do we launch all the B twos, or or do we keep them there? And and so that's a little bit about where I, where I was that day. Mm -hmm. And as a young airman, what I learned is. No matter what you're doing, if you're in the military or if you're in corporate America, the importance of knowing how to do your job and know, knowing how to do it well, uh, because you never know when that moment's going to strike. Mm -hmm. So, were you, you were at the, the Pentagon? Where did you say you were? Before that, you said you were right at the I was Pentagon, at the right? Pentagon mm -hmm. before, but I was at Whiteman Air Force Base okay. in Missouri with, with the B-2s mm. on that exact moment. Yeah. So mm. I saw everybody... Um, yeah, respond. Where's Whiteman at? I'm from Missouri. It's in Missouri. It's uh, Warrensburg. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's about 45 minutes from Kansas City. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's where he's from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Small world. Yeah. Are you from Kansas City? Or are you just. No, no. Okay. Uh, um, oh, boy. I moved 26 times in my life. <laughs> as soon as I said that, I was like, oh, yeah, both of your parents were in the military. <laughs> yeah. That, no, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Because I know in the military, you're usually moving around a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we did. You're pretty much. The whole United States is where you're from. <laughs> that, that, I said wherever I put my boots yeah, is where exactly. I'm from. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and they've landed here. Yep. Not moving. Yeah. It's pretty. It's a pretty nice place to be. It is an exceptional place. Yeah, I, I love, love it. it. Yes. Well, we have a lot of mountains in Colorado. When I was reading up about you, um, there was an instance I think I read about about you flying with an engine that went out or something of that sort. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that experience, oh, too. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was looking at that and I was like, holy cow, that must be... I, I can't only imagine like what the pro I mean, obviously there's protocols for that, but unpack that for us. I want to hear about that story as well. Oh my goodness. Okay. So that, I think the story you're referring to is when I was flying over in Bosnia, mm -hmm. uh, flying uh, at the time I was flying the, the 130. And, um, so we're deployed flying combat missions over there. And when you fly, you have what's called a hard crew, which means you fly with the same people, uh, f throughout your, your deployment. And so there was about 13 people on the crew and I was the uh, mission commander and um, I had just um, uh, received a brand new co-pilot and uh, so he just got checked out flew over to Bosnia and his first flight um, being checked out was in combat so that that's the kind of set the stage oh. um, we also had a navigator an engineer and then we had um we did command and control in the back of the plane and we had some army guys because uh, we were helping um, our uh, service men on the ground confiscate, confiscate uh, um, a uh, surface to air missile from the enemy. So that kind of sets the stage. Uh, so here we are, we're flying and very important mission. We have the army guys there for a reason. We have to make sure we're taking care of the team on the ground. And uh, as we're flying, um, one of the engines catch on fire and look out okay 
And one thing <laughs> as a pilot, when you're in front and you have the guys in the back, they're relying on you mm-hmm. to keep them safe. And so your voice and if you get excited, uh, kind of tells them, you know, if everything's going to be okay or not. And so very long story short, um, you know, the, the co-pilot brand new was like, oh my gosh, you know, we read about this stuff. We studied this stuff, but here we are. And he, you know, he was brand new. And so we definitely had a pull together as a team, um, had the, you know, navigator come up and kind of overlook the, over the shoulder of the co-pilot and the engineer. And I started taking care of the fire. And then at the same time, we had another compounded emergency mm-hmm. where we lost, uh, air compression. And so we all had to get, go on oxygen and we still weren't done with the mission. So mm-hmm. we're trying to stay there uh, to take care of what needed to be done. And as that's going on, uh, and we're looking at not only electronics, but the hydraulics, we start having a problem with a second engine. And if we lost another engine, we wouldn't be able to go over the mountains to get out of Bosnia. Mm. So I'm thinking, where are we going to land mm-hmm. uh, if that happens? Which it's, you're in a combat zone. So there's a lot going on there. So very long story short, um, we finished the mission. We're able to take care of uh, the emergency. We get over the mountains and we're flying back to Aviano Air Base. That's where we were flying in and out of. And as we were doing it, um, you know, one of our standards were to make coffee. You said you like coffee? Yeah. So we made the engineer would make some uh, Starbucks coffee and he also put in some Spunk Meyer cookies. And so it smelled like home. So mm-hmm. everybody knew we were going to be safe and we're going home. Uh, yet we still didn't have an engine mm-hmm. and we still had some other problems. He's making coffee in the jet? Yeah. Okay. In the 130, you can make, you can do that. Okay. You know, <laughs> other planes, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> and so we did that. And uh, the army guys were sitting on the bunk going, oh, this must not be a serious thing okay. because they're drinking coffee and we're all eating cookies. And uh, so we landed safely. We got greeted by all the emergency, uh, you know, uh, response vehicles. Uh, but when the army guys turned in their gear to life support, uh, they said, how was a flight? And they were kind of relaying everything that happened. And the life support airman was like, oh my gosh, that was pretty serious. They go, oh, we didn't think anything of it because yeah, we were eating cookies and having mm-hmm. coffee and you know, we got back safely and they weren't making a big deal about it. So that's just yeah. one of the stories, but it was really a crew, crew effort and making sure we took care of the mission on the ground and, mm-hmm. and took care of everybody in the sky. How does that apply to what you're doing now with Delta V? The Delta V. <clears throat> yeah. The Delta V? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, you know, I think all of our experiences in life um, kind of shape who we are and, and really help us to, to be just better personally and professionally. Mm-hmm. And so with leadership coaching, executive coaching, you could take all these lessons and, and the journey that, that I've had in the 32 years of the military and in life um, and apply that and, and help others reach their full potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, not to mention like just being calm under extreme pressure, right? Yeah. Like that's yeah. insane. <laughs> and a lot of that I'm, I'm sure is your directive because you were in command, right? Mm-hmm. For that mission. Um, but like, we were talking about this on another episode. I'm trying to remember like a couple of weeks ago, but it was like, when you go through situations like that, like I think I feel like when you get transitioned back into civilian life, sometimes I feel like the problems are probably not as crazy as like, hey, I was on a, I was flying a plane with an engine fail and the second one was trying to give out on me at the same time and there was a whole bunch of issues. Mm-hmm. Like that's a crazy problem. And I think your training, it attributes to your training, right? And to know what to do under any circumstance. But like, I'm assuming that like staying calm under pressure is just one of your MOs, what you've gotten garnered from the military, right? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think uh, de- definitely just try to stay even, I guess, as, mm-hmm. as have always been. Uh, don't get really excited. You know, I have a, I have a 12 year old and a 10 year old and, you know, things happen and I'm just like, okay, you know, it's just, you just take it in, in stride. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do, it's funny you, you mentioned the military. I, when, when something happens, I go, well, bullets aren't flying over my head. So I yeah. think we're okay. You know, <laughs> yeah. you just kind of give it, grounding, put in perspective yeah. <laughs> and, and just say, okay, take a deep breath, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And, and let's just move through it and uh, figure out, mm-hmm. you know, the best way to address whatever situation it is. So. Yeah. And, and you had a mission too. So it's like, I was, yeah. I was just thinking like, you know, with in, even in business, you have a mission, you have things that are going wrong. Mm-hmm. You want to you still should focus on the mission, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. The You know, 
uh, it's good to have a mission and a mm -hmm. purpose and um, a team around you that is also united in what that focus is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how has that transition been with these? It sounds like you <clears throat> work mostly with executive leadership, C-suite level people. So a lot of leaders in the business world. How has that transition been for you? It's been about two years, right, since you've been out of the yeah. military. It, Let's it, talk a little bit about that because that's pretty interesting as well. Yeah. So uh, it has been two years, a little over two years. And, you know, I, I had a very unique military experience. Uh, I, I didn't just fly. Um, I, I had the opportunity to work um, uh, as a political advisor for the Pacific. So I got to travel to the Pacific and I helped the Pacific commander um, actually advise him on, on different situations and strategy. Uh, I worked in the Thai embassy. Um, I worked in a think tank in, uh, in, um, in DC and um, you know worked on, on Capitol Hill and the Pentagon four times. So having that experience wow. gives you a breadth of understanding of different cultures, of uh, different uh, work environments, uh, companies, as well and expertise and really just value what everybody brings to the table uh, wherever you are um, and and so transitioning I take that ex experience right valuing everybody valuing the, the diversity and thought and perspective and skill sets and and I, I take that and transition it into kind of the civilian uh, world and that perspective well I know at scale because I've dealt with a lot of businesses of medium size at least um, a lot of the biggest things that they find themselves butting their head up against is systems and processes and being prepared preparation, whether that's a meeting or a podcast interview or whatever it might be. And like what better background you have, you know, Pentagon being in DC, all the things that you've done and offering those specific things to these businesses. Um, because at a, at some point in a business, they have to have those in place or just, they're just not going to grow or they're going to, they're going to implode. And so have, do you have had, have you had some experiences, um, implementing those specific things into a lot of the, the clients that you have now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I work with a CEO that was really trying to transform, uh, the business, uh, after 50 years, uh, that means rebranding, uh, policies, procedures, um, and, and just working on the culture. So th those are a lot of different elements. Sometimes you just address one, maybe if it's just, hey, policies, procedures, uh, or, hey, I need to rebrand. But, you know, they wanted to look at the, you know, the whole totality of all of that. And, mm -hmm. and so that's just one example uh, going in and just sitting back, gathering uh, the data um, and, and, and really helping them see uh, a, a new vision and, and a way forward. So they're, they optimize, um, you know, who they are and, and their mission. Yeah. Yeah. I know that right out of the gate, as far as like any business that has their, you know, I don't want to cuss, but shit together. Like they, they have those in place. Like you said, like those yeah. are the ones that scale up. One of our past guests, we always mention them high five plumbing, they're a plumbing mm -hmm. service, yeah. but they make 2 million a month. It's insane. And we went to go visit and Andrew actually helped them set up their own podcast studio because mm -hmm. they're covering all the bases. Which they and, released an episode today and it was out of angle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's what I say. But their processes were just unbelievable. And you look at this. I used to work at a very high-end marketing agency and it was like a Google type right. of like environment. And this plumbing company was like a Google type of environment. You walk in and there's like yeah, it's their, amazing, their right? manifesto on the wall or like a mural talking about whatever, the core competencies. And you're like, plumbing company, right? Like, yeah. this is crazy. They have mm -hmm. a, a localized a warehouse with cubbies full of tools. And then they have their own external warehouse, right? Yeah, bigger it's warehouse. Yeah. Bigger warehouse. Mm -hmm. And they have like a convenience store inside this um, new headquarters as well. And it's just like. That's what we're talking about when you really have it all together and the systems are talking to the processes and everything's starting to really yeah. mesh together and everybody has a plan. It, like in the military, like in theory, at least like you join and you have like a map of like, okay, if you do these things, here's where you're going to be in X amount of years. Right. Absolutely. That's how they are over there. And it's like, that's, you talk about impact and significance and all those different things. Like you said, you, there was a mission, right? Mm -hmm. For a lot of the employees from the first day, they know if they do the right thing and they excel where they're going to be placed in the future of the company. And I think that's just so important. And it's so cool that you're able to implement, you know, some of those with Del the Delta V. It's just, it's awesome to, to see yeah. what the other side of that looks like. Cause for us, like anybody could be a business owner, right? 
And so we all start different places. And, you know, I've dealt with a lot of veterans. I love working with them because that is something that has been mm. inherent in them. And th I don't want to say beat into them, but you know what right. I mean? Like <laughs> they know their yeah. stuff as far as that's concerned, no matter what branch, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. I don't want to talk too much crap on the army, but yeah, even they know. So, <laughs> well, my, my, my hat's off to that, uh, that company, because if you get the fundamentals right, then it, everything else will fall into mm -hmm. place. And you have employees that love where they work. Uh, they have a good culture. Uh, they help each other out. You have a good mission, and then the customers know what it is, and and they have pride around what they do every single day. And, mm -hmm. and w what an exciting thing if you can take care of your people, execute the mission, and have pride in what you do, and you know move forward and be successful. Yeah, yeah. Go check out that episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's high five, honey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's fantastic. So, talk to us about like taking on a new client. What that looks like. What you're looking for. Is there a consultation meeting and and kind of work through the process of like the services you offer um, a client? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there, there's definitely a, a, a get to know you kind of meeting uh, because it, it could be an individual. It, it could be a team. Um, it also could be a company like working with a CEO that has a vision for the company. Mm -hmm. And so you definitely have to just sit down and it's all about what the customer is looking for and how to shape that um, to meet their needs. And so that duration can be, you know, uh, two months. It could be six months. It could be a year, you know, whatever they're looking for. It could mm -hmm. be. Um, you know, I've done some board retreats as well. You could do a board retreat with a group, right? Yeah. But then you that can transition to working with them individually as well. And and so it, it really, uh, you know, to answer your question, it, it just really depends. Mm -hmm. it, it's really, you know, talking to the client and seeing the art of possible and then, you know, together, uh, working together to make, make that all uh, action. That's awesome. And do you have like a background? Because a lot of that is sales right and because you're getting to know you're breaking ice with a potential team client customers or whatever ceo whatever it might be like you're going to know them so you're building some rapport right and so yeah. you're getting intel right mm -hmm. of like some of their needs and different things then you're kind of fitting you know what services that you can potentially sell them back or offer them back right and yeah. so um i don't know if you've had too many different experiences of that but walk us through like one specifically that you you worked with in the past so we can kind of have a better understanding of your services and um we yeah. have that out there yeah, I don't have a background in sales, okay. uh, yeah. but you know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, because I came from the military, right? Yeah. So just being a servant leader, yeah. all right? But definitely have an understanding of getting to know people. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. If it was, you know, when I was a wing commander, you have to know the community, the community leaders. You have to know the people mm -hmm. that are on the base and work with them. Uh, so I think that's just really the big thing is somebody calls and you sit down and you just really assess uh, what they're looking for, what are their needs. And, uh, you know, from there, you, you build out a plan, much like you were talking about that one organization, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a plumbing, you know, how, how can we help achieve uh, your end result and, and how long? And, and so you just kind of have to lay that out together and then, and then take action. And sometimes as you go down that process, you know, things can adjust and you just be very fluid and, and agile with the customer because it's all about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk about culture. You've mentioned it a couple of times already during our interview. So it is that very important to you? Like, obviously it's important, right? But talk about like your experience. I'm sure with the military, culture's built into you as well, right? But yes. how is that important in the business world as well? Well, I, you know, culture is something that uh, I, I, I've been thrown into situations uh, several times where uh, there, there needed to be a culture change or, um, assistance in leading an organization a certain direction. And I don't know how I had that wonderful opportunity, but culture is something that I found that, you know, there's not a timestamp on it. Uh, you know, some people say, if you Google it, hey, it takes about five years. Well, in one situation, we were able to move through it in the military uh, 18 months, you know, in others, six months. And so culture is really important because- What do you mean it takes time? Sorry? Like, what do you mean it takes time like to build? It takes time sometimes to build. Okay. It takes time to change, okay. right? Say you have a toxic culture or you have a really laissez-faire culture mm -hmm. and they're not meeting standards and not paying attention to it because they've gotten lazy, right? Mm -hmm. Or you get this toxic where they're 
it's way too stringent and they're too hard on people and okay. it just people are scared to come to work yeah. um i had i had both at, at the same base mm -hmm. uh and and to bring them together uh and and so that's leadership and so there's not a blueprint for that because mm -hmm. every situation is different and so culture is so important and as a commander my priorities have always been people mission and pride and i kind of mm -hmm. talked about that a little earlier but that talks to the culture you take care of the people because they're the most valuable asset that we have and they're the creative they're uh, they're, they're so inspiring right and they're the engine in what we do and that's the mission and if you if you don't have the right people with this, the right culture and, and the right focus, then you can't do that very important mission. If it's what if it's in the military or if it's in corporate America, and then having pride in what you do, that's part of the culture. That having that pride in wearing the uniform, pride in coming to work, um, doing your podcast, right, being excited about it, and say this is who we are. You know that pride is really important. And so culture, I, I think, is is really what drives us. It, it's it, it inspires us um, and motivates us, you know, to come to work, to be innovative, to create the new widget, if that's, you know, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if you're in the military, serve your country, you know, just that, that culture. And mm -hmm. so, as you mentioned, you know, different services have different cultures, right? If it's the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, the Space Force, or the Coast Guard, I mean, all of them, you know, the Marines. You know, everybody has a different culture, but mm. it's super important either in the military or in corporate America, right? Um, I mean, my hat's off again. You use that example of the, the plumber, right? That he has a good culture uh, and, and they mm -hmm. have a good a model that anybody would want to be a part of, mm -hmm. right? Be excited about. That is so true. The agency I worked at was all about culture. I mean, we had our own vernacular. Right. We had our own whatever it might be, right? It's like the military, right? Your own vernacular. We were prideful because we were the best and we knew we were the best. And mm -hmm. so we upheld ourselves as the best. And that meant work your ass off, you know, right. but also play your ass off once it, the job gets done. Mm -hmm. And there's something to be said about that, right? Like when you're immersed in an actual really good, like it's almost like you can talk about it, but it's also like if you haven't experienced a great culture, you, it's hard to define, you know, for yourself yeah. at least. And so once you are a part of something like that, it's like, man, um, I just had a recent, because I have a couple businesses, but with my marketing agency, I had to remind myself more recently, like, I need to have more fun. Like I'm having, I'm too serious about things right now and I need to have some fun. You know, I need to like, whatever it might be, I need to kid around or whatever ne right. needs to be done. But like, there's something to be said about just like enjoying what you're doing, you know? And I love how you have what those different pillars, the people, the mission, the pride. I, I love that. And they kind of, it is like almost like a circle. I know it's kind of like a step process what you're talking about, but it's kind of like a circle of like, yeah. once you have all those things together, something's really important ticking for any business, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, that's really cool for, um, Delta V. So do we ever talk about like what that stands for Delta V? I don't ah, know if we did, no, right? No, we haven't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I might be a little geek, you know, uh, it's physics, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, delta V is change in velocity, mm -hmm. and came up with that because, you know, I wasn't sure what I was going to do after I got out of the military. But, you know, you definitely can change your velocity in so many things. If it's your vision, if it's your leadership, if it's how you approach uh, whatever's in front of you, you can change your velocity. And and so, and velocity that, is the speed at which you're going. Yeah. Or? It's, a, it's an impulse. You need, the, you know, Delta V is you need this impulse to mm -hmm. ignite uh, that change. Mm -hmm. And so in all of us, we have our moments where we need to have something ignite us to shift uh, where our trajectory is going. Mm -hmm. If it's, hey, the podcast, right? We, we want to, you know, shift it to go this way. Mm -hmm. right. Or, you know, some of the things we were talking about before or your company. Or, you know, maybe you have aspirations you know, um, athletically to go do something or climb all the 14ers in Colorado, right? Mm -hmm. You want to change your velocity and, and in some way, uh, that's what Delta V stands for. It's a cool way to say pivot. Pivot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With yeah. a little like, ign I like it. You yeah. know, a, a little <laughs> ignition in there, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah, some to force, ignite yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that. So, yeah. So it's physics. That's what mm -hmm. it is. It's right here. The, okay. Just a little Delta V. I thought that you was know? Space Force. Well, well, no, no, it's Delta V. <laughs> Delta v. That's okay, because I, yeah. I, I love the Space Force. Yeah. I, I had the opportunity to work um, with them from the very beginning, yeah. uh, the last two and a half years of my career. 
helped yeah. stand up U.S. Uh, Space Command here, right here in Colorado Springs okay. with General Raymond. I love I that. Was a, I got yeah. to be the chief of staff for him. And then what? That's he, awesome. he said, come on over. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, 20 December of 2019, I believe it was, um, stood up, you know, the Space Force. Mm-hmm. And I got to work with uh, Space Operations Command and help design That's and awesome. build that with General Whiting, who is now the new commander mm-hmm. at U.S. Space Command. Fantastic yeah. leaders incredible mission. I mm-hmm. wish I was 20 years old all over again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so jealous of those guys sure, I, sure. and gals. I get to go out there and, but and, that's what, that's why SpaceX, <laughs> SpaceX exists, you know? So, yeah. so if you do, you know, maybe you can't do it in the military, but maybe you can do it privately. Right. Through your well, own. I guess you <laughs> and I have a, you know, yeah. have something in the future, right? You're going to, yeah, exactly. I'm going to, I'll go, I'll veer off to the moon and you can go to Mars. That right? sounds like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. No, uh, I love that the logo that's like inspired kind of from the Space Force uh, a little yeah, bit and yeah. Space Force, to be honest, kind of looks like Star Trek, you know, so it does, <laughs> their logo but you know what? Awesome. It's all good. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's, I think it's fantastic. They have their own, they're building their own culture. We were just talking mm-hmm, about culture, right? Mm-hmm. They're building their own culture. They're guardians. You know, and it's just an exciting time. It's exciting. It, yeah. And I'm excited for them, you mm-hmm. know, as they grow and redefine who they are um, and move forward. It's it's a very exciting time. But uh, yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Delta V kind of came from physics and, and Space Force. So. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have a good meaning behind your, your logo, I think. Thank and, you. And Thank it's, you. I think it, it puts that passion behind it that makes you. And what we've talked about a lot on this podcast is that in order to stick through the hard times in business, you have to have that passion because if you don't have that passion, you're gonna not wanna do it. <laughs> Absolutely, because yeah. we're all gonna hit speed bumps oh, yeah. <laughs> or hit the potholes of life, mm-hmm. right? And and we're gonna learn through all of them, but yeah, definitely mm-hmm. that passion, the vision inside of all of us is what drives us forward, so. Yeah, you look like someone who's a product of really great leadership, just giving you that ob- this observation right now. <laughs> yeah. um, and you seem like a great leader as well. Um, military leadership, right? What what do you take from like military leadership as you transition to business and the leaders in the business world? I'm assuming there's some similarities there, but what differences are there as well? Oh, that's that's a solid question. Yeah. Um, I, I think, oh, gosh, you know, it, it, it kind of goes back to my priorities, right? I, that I had since I was a commander for the first time. It, if you're a commander in the military or if you're a CEO of a company um, or director or vice president in a company, right? You gotta take care of your people. Um, and, and I think that's just something as a leader, you have to have the ability to actively listen. You have to, you know, you don't have to do anything. Let me, let me say that. Mm-hmm. But it, one, some things that I've seen is empowering your employees to be innovative, um, and to execute that mission that you gave them, right? Because you never know if somebody has been in a company for two weeks or two years or 20 years, that the age doesn't matter, it's the ideas. And it's allowing uh, those employees to really uh, be creative um, and to listen to them because Mm -hmm. it's the collective thoughts and inputs that really make a company move forward. So leadership is, of course, integrity, it's empowering, it's taking care of the people and it's having the responsibility to set the process and procedures of the mission, right? Mm-hmm. You do have to give some guidelines. Um, the, the companies that I've worked for or with that I've had kind of ad hoc and, and not had, um, I'm not saying you have to be so structured like the military, not at all, mm-hmm. but you do have to have some boundaries in there. And those that had that allowed the, the employees um, the room to kind of know you know, what expectations were and, and how to move forward. So mm-hmm. I think those are some similarities or, or some, um, some, some good uh, milestones to kind of have uh, as you're, whatever you're doing. If you're working for a small business or a bigger business, uh, you know, take care of people. The mm-hmm. mission will get done. Yeah. That's a great, great lesson for sure. Yeah. Let's nice. talk um, failures. Hmm. Um, it can be either one, right? Military or in business, but talk a little bit about, cause I feel like a person's really defined by how they react during their failures, right? We can all do very well when everything's going great for us, but like, how do we react when shit's hitting the fan and you know, everything seems to be going wrong and your team's looking at you to be the leader and engines failed, you know, how, how do you react through a situation like that? So have you, especially now, 
in the business world, have you had instances of a failure and then how have you reacted to that? Um, and maybe some learning lessons as well. I am an imperfect human. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fail all the time mm -hmm. and, and I, I approach it with, you know, every, every speed bump that you hit is an opportunity. I say it's a gift and opportunity to learn, to grow and be better. If you don't take those moments where you trip and you fall and you scrape your knee or you hit rock bottom um, and reflect and say, oh my gosh, how can I, how can I be better? How can I approach, how could I have approached it better um, or assess it or what lesson can I learn from this? You know, that's where you're not gonna grow. It's really, that's where you grow. I've had so many flights where the most important part of the flight I mean, you have to prepare, you have to fly, but the most important is the debrief. Those that didn't debrief are missing out on the opportunity to grow because that's where the growth happens. And so um, there have been many flights, there have been many leadership instances in the military and outside, yeah, that I didn't do things perfectly because I'm a flawed human, but I, I look at it, I should say, yet I, I look at it as opportunities to learn from and and just try to, you know, do better the next time, and and so you know that's that's how I look at it. That's good, yeah. And especially like you don't want to hang on it too long. And say it's no. a big mistake, and you know maybe it's a lesson you learned, but you made the same mistake again, right? I think in life we do that too, right? We're like, mm. learn that lesson, never going to make that mistake <laughs> again. Whether it's everything in life, personal life, right. like dating the certain personality type, oh, mm -hmm. or like something yeah. in the military, or whatever it might have been, like something you knew, but then you're like. Yeah. I don't know what the universe or if you're religious, a God, like whatever is trying to tell me here, but I've learned this. I thought I learned this yeah. lesson, right? Yeah. And so I think there's something to be said about like not hanging on to things, even if it's a repeat mistake, right? I mean, yeah. and when you're talking to a lot of these, you know, these these business folks that you're talking to, I'm, I'm sure that's probably the same case, right? Where they're learning lessons that maybe they just need someone who's outside the forest, right? Who's looking from bird's eye view to be like, you already know this stuff, but here, I'm not in this situation. Let me give you my perspective. Has that yeah. been some of the situations too? Yeah, absolutely. There, there's something that <clears throat> I'll share that we, I think we all have what's called uh, saboteurs, people that try to mm -hmm. sabotage us, right? You have that voice and they're like, hey, I'm not good enough. I can't do this podcast. Um, I, I, I can't apply for that job, you know, or I don't look good enough or whatever it is, right? It's those voices in our, in our head. And, and so, you know, working with some clients is identifying what has shaped us, what events from childhood or through life experience has shaped us to where we are. And those, those voices as saboteurs might cause us to avoid things, to be overcritical, to, and, and they, they prevent us from being our very best because we're listening uh, too much. And so, uh, you know, working with different clients, you have to be able to identify, um, mm -hmm you know, maybe where we are and where we want to go and, and what's getting in the way. Sometimes there's little barriers and it could be those voices that are those barriers, right? And and just having the courage to work through that and and look at, you know, those missteps, as you said, right? Or or those failures, however you want to put that. Um, again, as as gifts and opportunities to learn from, to grow from, and and, you know, to really see the fruits of what can come after that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, um, I'm living my best life right now, and it hasn't always been a um, rainbows and unicorns, right? I, I've hit rock bottom. That's a whole nother podcast. Yet, I would never change any experience that has led me to this point because of where I am. I have a, a beautiful family, great, amazing friends. I love the business, love this community, and you know, like I said, I'm living my best life. So. I wouldn't change anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that, that's something that I, I have the opportunity to share with, with some clients and, and help them through those moments so they don't get stuck. Mm -hmm. So that's a great lesson. And I think it's so hard for us to realize that in the moment of like rock bottom, mm -hmm. right? You're right. like, I don't know how I'm going to move forward after I don't even can't even see tomorrow, let mm -hmm. alone, you know, next year, whatever the future might look like when you're in the middle of the muck mm -hmm. and, it's so good. I mean, a lot of our viewers will probably be listening to this and they might be going through a situation. A lot of them are business owners or whatever. They're going through a really hard time. They just don't know, like whatever it is, like you make it through. We somehow yeah. make it through every time. And there's a beauty to that. And I, most people I know who've had um, a great or just 
a, a career in, in itself and looking back, they're like, I wouldn't change anything, even the crazy stuff, even the mistakes, even all that stuff. It's part of my story. I'm here now because of all those decisions, right? So it's just, it's part of our story, you know? Yes. And in Christianity, we say our, it's our testimony. It's like, this is where, this is what made me, put me in the spot that I am today to make the decisions and confirm who I am today. Right. And so that's really beautiful. And you have a very, very, very amazing career. And thank you so much for coming on our show. This has just been such a great perspective. And before we land this plane, no pun intended, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's your camera right there. Oh. Where can we find you? Um, anything you want to say, put your phone number. No, I'm kidding. Anything yeah. you want to give to the camera right there, social please security, do. Yes, yeah, yeah, social right. security <laughs> number. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to change your velocity, you can uh, go to the delta-v.com and uh, love to sit down with you and help you change your trajectory. Thank you guys. All very right. Much. Well, sweet. Yeah, this has been a great episode. It's an honor to have you on, and Thank we'll you see so you guys much. on the next one. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> that was right. good. Thank that was you. awesome. All right. Thank A lot of great learning lessons there.